aviation experts have defended Emirates Airlines' decision to charge passengers in dollars, citing the airline's significant cost for services such as fuel, airport fees in Nigeria, and fund stock in the country. They argue that this pricing strategy is necessary to mitigate the financial losses caused by exchange rate fluctuations. Experts warn that without this adjustment, foreign airlines may consider exiting the Nigerian market. Sean Mendes, aviation consultant, joins me from Mumbai, India. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Well, this news sounds like a 360-degree U-turn for me because I remember vividly when some stakeholders, uh, maybe not the same set of people now, stood against Emirates' decision to charge passengers in dollars. But let me ask you, on which side of the divide are you? I am firmly on the side of the market being able to set its own uh, policies. If there is a need for Emirates have a business need to set their fares in dollars and charge in dollars, uh, and the market prefers not to do that, then Emirates will have to change their position because people are not buying their tickets. Uh, but if on the flip side, Emirates realizes that this is something that is essential and the passengers also accept that yes perhaps this is you know this is a reasonable requirement uh you know they will they will comply with it and i think to this point of time uh you know emirates is very firm that this is the condition of their restarting flights to nigeria this week and uh you know consequently i think the market is you know is speaking for itself and that passengers will buy emirates tickets regardless of whether they're sold in dollars or naira well, for you, I really want to know where you stand. I know you're, you're trying to tell us that it depends, let market take charge and all of that. But what do you make of this really situation where, you know, some of the things or some of the services that Nigerian agencies, I mean, agencies of government render to these people are actually done in dollars. And then you're saying to them, do not sell your tickets in dollars. Is that a fair bargain? And then looking at some of the reasons given either by the airline or the industry stakeholders, one is forced to say, you know what, I mean, this is probably the only way out. What's your thought on this? Well, I think it's absolute hypocrisy, and I think it is symbolic of the dysfunctionality that Nigerian aviation descended to under the last administration, unfortunately. You know, when, uh, you know, I, I was running an airline, uh, you know, which, which was one of the largest airlines operating into Nigeria, and one of our constant issues was that you were selling tickets in Naira, you were collecting money in Naira, but the official rate that you were selling the tickets at had no relation to the rate that you could actually acquire dollars at in the market in order to buy fuel, in order to pay landing fees, to pay handling fees. And then it came to the point where the Nigerian government agencies itself, the same agencies that were insisting that you had to charge people in Naira at a certain exchange rate, were then insisting that you had to pay them in dollars at a different exchange rate. Immediately, you were writing off 20, 30, 40 percent of whatever income you were getting uh, uh, simply because of this parallel exchange rate mechanism. And despite many, many promises from aviation, finance, central bank, and so forth, nothing happened under the previous administration. It's only when this administration has come in that in the last few months we've seen a lot of changes in that. But, you know, the trust was completely lost between the aviation industry and the Nigerian government. And it's going to take a long time for that to be rebuilt. And, you know, that uh, the, we're seeing the consequences of that in high fares that are being charged because people don't trust the exchange rate. They don't trust the fact that their ability to repatriate currency is going to be consistently available. And they don't trust the exchange rate that the money is going to be made available to them. Well, that's quite interesting, but don't you think that has sort of been solved with the collapse of the exchange windows? I mean, we have all of that collapsed now, harmonization of the exchange rate. I don't think it's solved. I think that there is a temporary fix in place, but for it to be solved, we're going to have to see this continuing for the next few years. Uh, you know, definitely something that lasts across just a single administration and the administration's policy. Uh, you know, uh, an airline has to be able to, if not make profits, but at least not make losses. And the reality was that most airlines operating into Nigeria over the last few years have taken huge losses from operating into the market. And at the end of the day, 
it's in nobody's interest to do that because you see airlines just pull out of the market like Emirates did uh, because they weren't, a, you know, they, they were they were booking millions and billions of Naira on each ticket that they were selling, but they were not able to actually access those funds or use those funds even to pay for services in Nigeria beyond, you know, maybe a few staff salaries and so forth. So it's something that, you know, it, it it's been a number of years of erosion of the trust and of erosion of the confidence in the system to get to this point. It's going to take a number of years for you know for that to rebuild and the trust to to come back for uh airlines to once again be confident that their operations into nigeria realize them the gains that are actually happening on paper well sean did you fear that this move could embolden other airlines to do the same and don't you think that could cause some level of disruption to the system i mean if you have all the airlines are beginning let's say all the international airlines you know begin to charge in dollars I think there's a significant number of international airlines which are already, if not directly, doing all tickets in dollars. They are definitely differentiating in terms of what fares they're willing to charge in Naira and what fares they're willing to charge in dollars. This has been a constant refrain for a number of uh, for a number of years from you know from travel agents and Nanta has, has spoken out against this that airlines don't sell cheap tickets in Ni in Nigeria for the simple reason that you know the the cost of selling a ticket in Naira is effectively the airline gets thirty to forty percent less than what they've. Uh, you know, than what they actually charge the passenger. So I think that's already been happening for a while. I think Emirates is the first airline to just come out straight out and say dollars or nothing. But uh, other airlines have been doing it in stealth. And, you know, a lot of the regional airlines, the smaller airlines are able to get around this. Uh, you know, if, if, if you're operating in a country, say Ghana, where, you know, a number of big Nigerian banks, uh, Zenith, Access, et cetera, are operating as well, there are ways of, if not necessarily getting Naira out of the country, but, you know, doing balanced credit lines and things like that. So I think regional carriers have less of an issue. Uh, you know, where the Nigerian banks are operating, who, who, who can balance off Nigeria and foreign exchange. But for the big international airlines, the Emirates, British Airways, Delta, and so forth, we've seen it. In the last few years, these airlines have cut back on their service, have raised the fares from Nigeria. And, you know, all this is the result of the fact that selling tickets in Naira was a losing proposition. Well... That, that's a sad one. A lot actually right there. But then another issue that sprung up is that of trapped funds. Haven't those been considerably cleared or are these, you know, recent accumulations? Uh, the, the backlog in trapped funds have largely been cleared by the Central Bank of Nigeria. The remaining uh, funds that, you know, are out there are for the most part current funds. So that fund, you know, you may have cleared the backlog of, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, literally, but currently airlines are still selling tickets and most of the airlines are selling tickets in Naira. So that number doesn't ever go down to zero. That number will go down to a certain level. And especially now in summer, which is the peak travel season, the funds that are coming in for tickets sold in June, July, August are now coming due and now need to be repatriated. So, you know, there's going to be a cyclical up and down on this. Uh, but right now we're in a position where, where where the backlog is probably as high as it's ever been since the central bank was able to clear substantially all of that backlog. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think there's a problem in that right now. I don't think, you know, if, if, if airlines felt that this was going to continue to be an issue, you wouldn't see a number of airlines increasing services into Nigeria, wouldn't see Emirates' return into Nigeria. However, as I mentioned before, the confidence is there in the system as it is today. The long-term confidence is not necessarily there. And that is going to take at least a year or two of this continuing, you know, with, with an understanding of how the exchange rate mechanism is going to work, how the access to the foreign exchange fund is going to work, what the lead times are going to be, et cetera. And, uh, you know, that is when you'll probably see a more normalization of the system to where it was, you know, maybe 10 years ago in terms of the ability to access tickets in Naira at, at official exchange rates as opposed to, uh, you know, the, the, the current market exchange rates. Well, what do you mean by current market exchange rates? Because we have the official and, of course, we have the parallel markets, just that. Anyway, you talked about Nanta earlier. What did you say? No, no, precisely. That's that. That's it. Because you know, when people look in terms of how much is a ticket in Naira, uh, depending on what what statement they're trying to make, they either use the parallel exchange rate if they're trying to make it look like a negative, or they use the official exchange rate if they're trying to make it look like a positive. The reality is, the official exchange rate is just a paper number unless there is actually access to dollars at that rate, which is still. I won't say a problem, but it's still a major challenge to try and access, uh, you know, liquidity at short notice at official exchange rates. And I think that is where you see 
the difference between you know purchasing a ticket outside of Nigeria versus purchasing a ticket in Nigeria and purchasing a ticket in dollars versus naira. Absolutely. Well, you talked about Nanta earlier, that's National Association of Nigerian Travel Agencies. They've been quite consistent, you know, in their position. And of course, it's sort of engaged with Emirates to address its decision to sell tickets exclusively in dollars to Nigerian customers. And it's also advocating for the airline to offer a Naira payment option. But talk to me, why is Nanta taking this position? I mean, it's sort of different from what the other stakeholders in the industry are saying. Yeah, obviously has their self-interest in mind. I mean, they're an association of travel agents, so they have to represent what's in the interest of the travel agents. And, you know, because of the laws in Nigeria, because of the access to, you know, to dollars and so forth, uh, the reality is a person who is going to be paying in dollars cash is not going to your friendly neighborhood travel agent and, you know, paying him in dollars. You're going to pay him in Naira. But if you've got the dollars or you've got a credit card in dollars or so forth, you're going to pay directly to the airline. So the, the, the travel agency and, you know, obviously Nanta representing the travel agents are being cut out significantly by a decision to charge primarily in dollars or only in dollars. And consequently, you know, they're lobbying for their members to have to have access to the same inventory as, uh, you know, as a customer might have by going to the Emirates website or, you know, going to Expedia.com or one of the U.S. or, you know, British sites or so forth. So I think definitely Nanta has some self-interest over there. And look, the, the reality is in an ideal market that was functioning well, that wasn't dysfunctional. Uh, you know, this wouldn't be a problem. You know, in Ghana, for example, there is again a volatile exchange rate, but you can buy tickets in Ghana CDs because the liquidity issue and the exchange rate is 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 not a huge spread between uh, you know between an official and a you know street market rate in that respect. So I think the, the key thing is it's it's a rather unique situation. Well, I would say unique, but it's definitely a different situation in the Nigerian economy, which is leading to the travel agents being cut out by forcing people to trade in dollars and consequently you know obviously nanta as an association for travel agents needs to needs to work with the airlines to find a solution that works well both for their members the travel agents as well as protects the airline's interest thank you so much Joe mendes sean mendes bigger part of aviation consultant for your thoughts on the show today thank you